Hello students, this is our second video and our second lesson in the Introduction to Rational Functions series. And I don't know what notes number we're on today, but you can figure that out and fill it in when the time comes. The first thing I have displayed here would be the notes and assignment that we did last time. We had a little notes booklet, yours was white, mine is pink. And I'm just including these slides in the notes because I think we're going to want to refer back to them as we go through today's lesson. And just as a reminder, we learned that when we have a statement, kind of like we have, excuse me, I'm getting my tool situated here. When we have a statement kind of like this, that we can convert it into limit notation. And this part here tells us what the x's are doing, while this part here tells us what the y's are doing or what the height of the function is getting close to. So we'll just kind of quickly go through each of these slides. If you needed to see another one again, you could pause and uh, take a look at it. And just as a reminder, when we got to number six, you started working on your own or maybe in a small group, and you started using Desmos to graph these functions, and then you found their domain and range and asymptotes, and you wrote four limit statements yourself. Now, we don't know a ton about this kind of function yet, and so we might actually have a few mistakes. In fact, I even have a mistake. So looking at number eight, um, I drew the graph based on what I saw in Desmos, and I noticed that in this area here it kind of dipped down a bit, but then it went back toward a height of 1. So it's going toward a height of 1 on both sides. So that's why we get the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1, and that's why we get the limits as x goes to infinity and negative infinity are 1. But I guess I didn't pay very close attention to my graph when I was finding my range, so I'm going to redo that. If you were graphing on Desmos and you kind of zoomed in a bit, you would notice that the y values go down about to one-fifth and not lower. So I'm going to say that y is greater than one-fifth for my uh, range. Okay, and then we had 9 and 10. And I don't believe I have a copy of it here, but there was also an application problem that had to do with people eating dinner at a party or something, and you had to figure out the cost per person. So hopefully you had a chance to work on that. And that brings us to today's lesson. So we have notes number something, and we're going to further investigate horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to use a graphing calculator, use the table feature, and use that to help us figure out the horizontal asymptote. So notice that today we're looking at the function, we're not looking at the graph. But just based on the function, we'll be able to figure out the horizontal asymptote without knowing what the graph looks like. So here's how we're going to do that. First of all, you want to grab your calculator. And if you have anything already in y equals, you can just clear that. Get your calculator all ready to go. And the first function there on our notes was f of x equals 1 over x. So let's type that in. y equals 1 divided by x. And then it says use the table. So what I want to do is I want to type very large numbers into the table. And in order to type my own numbers into the table, I first go to table set, which is second window. And I make sure that it says independent ask. So if yours doesn't say independent ask, then you can change it to ask, press enter. And then when you go to the table, which is second graph, you'll be able to type in your own x values. So let's suppose that x is 100, or x is 1,000, or x is 10,000, or x is 100,000, or x is 1 million. I don't know how many spaces did I give us. I gave us five spaces on the notes handout, so we'll do one more. Looks like I need one more zero for one million. Now the calculator starts showing you the numbers in scientific notation. And you'll notice that the y values are 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0
0 0.001, and then you see 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So if you think about scientific notation, that's um, 0 0.0001. 1 times 10 to the negative fifth is 0 0.00001, and 1 times 10 to the negative sixth is 0 0.00001. So these numbers are getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, so what I've done is I've just gone back to my notes handout and I inputted those values from the table into the notes. And basically what we're seeing is that as x approaches infinity, because we're letting x get really, really large, we could let it ev get even larger if we wanted to, but as x approaches infinity, the y values are approaching zero. And that gives us the horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Okay, so we'll go through that process again for part B. We have a new function. We'll type the new function into the calculator, and then we'll use the table to see what's happening to the y values as the x values get larger and larger. Okay, so we're back with the calculator, and just back into y equals. Let's clear that function, and then let's type in y equals 100 divided by x minus 2, and make sure you put parentheses around your x minus 2. And then let's go back to the table, and it's still going to have the x values we typed in last time, but it has adjusted the y values for the new function. So we can take this information, and we can put it into our notes. Okay, so I've written the information from the table in my notes, and you can see that as the x values get really large, so as they approach infinity, the y values are approaching zero. Once again, we have y equals zero as the horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's repeat the process for part C. Back to the calculator, back to y equals, clear the function that is there, type in the new function, take a look at the table, 0 .03, 0 0.003. And then in scientific notation, we're going to have 0 .0003, 0 .00003, etc. So this information goes into our table in the notes. And once again, we see that as the x values approach really large, large numbers, like we're approaching infinity, the y values are approaching 0. So once again, we get a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. And it's not that every single function has the same horizontal asymptote, we know that. It's just that these three happen to have the same horizontal asymptote, and there's a reason for that, which we're going to discover in today's lesson. Now, after having done this three times, I hope you realize that, you know, we didn't really use the information from column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. I mean, yes, it helped to see that these numbers are changing and getting closer to 0, but really if we had just focused on the very last one, we would have been able to see that that y value is very close to zero. So what I have here in this box is just, do we really need a whole table? Could we just use one really big number? What if we just used one million, or one billion, or ten million, or whatever? 999,999, whatever you like. Seven million, seven hundred seventy-seven thousand, something, whatever. A very large number, let's plug it in, and let's see what the y value is. So let's go back to the calculator, type in this fourth function, which is 4x to the fifth, divided by, put parentheses around the denominator, 9x to the seventh minus 12. And let's look at the table. But remember, we're only focused on the very last number, 4 times 10 to the negative 13th. That's essentially 0. So once again, we get y equals 0. But we saved ourselves a little bit of work because we didn't make an entire table. We just focused on one really large number. Okay. The next part says, use your calculator and evaluate f of x at a very large number to help you find the horizontal asymptote of each function. 
So we're skipping the entire table and just focusing on one number like we did in problem 1D. So let's go ahead and go through those. Okay, 2a, we have 3x plus 4, make sure that's in parentheses, divided by 5x minus 6. Go back to the table. You can even clear all the other numbers in the table if you want and just keep the 1 million for x, and it looks like the y value is 0.6. Ah, oh, it's not zero this time. It's 0. 0.6. Well, would you look at that? And as a fraction, what is 0. 0.6? 0. 0.6 is 6 tenths, and 6 tenths reduces to, five, to 3 fifths. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 fifths. Now let's look at 2b. Should we do 2b or not 2b? That is the question. Okay, so 2b is x squared minus 1 divided by 2x squared plus 11. Notice parentheses around the numerator and parentheses around the denominator. Go to the table, and when we plug in 1 million for x, we get 0.5 for y, or as a fraction, 1 half. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 half. Now, take a look at the numbers in the function and the horizontal asymptote. The numbers in the function and the horizontal asymptote. Do you notice anything? And why is this happening for these problems and it didn't happen for the problems we just did for number 1? What's different? And what do you predict the answer will be for part C? Take a look at the numbers in the problem. What do you think the horizontal asymptote will be? And let's figure it out. Back to the calculator. We have 9x to the fourth plus 6 divided by 6x to the fourth plus 25. And when x is 1 million, oops, I pressed the wrong, oh, that's an interesting graph. That was a happy accident. Huh, okay, but I meant to go to the table. And when x is 1 million, the y value is 1.5. So as a fraction, we could think of that as 3 halves. And I'm wondering, is that what you predicted, that the horizontal asymptote would be y equals 3 halves? Do you see the relationship there? So hold that thought, and let's do number 3. And maybe you make a prediction. Maybe you look at some of the other features of the functions to try to figure out why some of them have a horizontal asymptote at zero and why others have horizontal asymptote that's not at zero. And I wonder what will happen for number three. So back to the calculator. Number three A, we have five x squared plus 4 divided by 3x minus 73. And I purposefully threw some weird numbers in here like 73, 145, 11. I mean, just so that you would know there's not necessarily uh, something special going on with special numbers. Like if every number, if every problem used only the numbers 2 and 4, well, Maybe we could chalk it up to something special about 2 and 4, but I'm just kind of throwing some random numbers in there so you'll realize that uh, that is not impacting it. Okay, when x is 1 million, this is 1.67 times 10 to the 6th. That is 1.67 million. Well, if the x values go to infinity and the y values go to infinity, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. The end behavior of the graph is going to be like so. It's not flattening out. And you might remember in the last lesson we had some that we had one at the end, I think it was number 10, that did not have a horizontal asymptote. Now let's take a look at part B. So we have x cubed 
minus 1 divided by x plus 145. Take a look at the table. When x is 1 million, y is, boy, do I even know this number, 1 trillion? A 1 with 12 zeros. So that is definitely not landing at a particular height. That is going off to infinity as well. No horizontal asymptote. Can you make a prediction about part C? And do you know why things are working out that way? So let's take a look with the calculator. And we have x squared minus 17 divided by 1000x. Look at the table. When x is 1 million, y is 1,000. That might not be enough information. What if x was 10 million? Did I get enough zeros in there? Then y is even bigger. What if x was 1 times 10 to the 8th? I'm putting it in scientific notation now because I don't want to draw all those zeros. The y's are getting even bigger. So sometimes it actually does help to put multiple y values and not just one very large one because you can see that the numbers are continuing to grow. As the x values grow, the y values grow. And so that means, once again, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, to wrap up this lesson, it says, describe the patterns. How do the degrees of the numerator and denominator impact the horizontal asymptote? Oh, the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. Huh. Were you looking at the degrees? Remember, that means the exponent. So if we look back at the first page, look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. In number 1a, the degree of the numerator is 0, and the degree of the denominator is 1. Same thing in 1b. In 1c, the degree of the numerator is 1, that's the power on x, and the degree of the denominator is 2. And in 1d, the degree of the numerator is 5, and the degree of the denominator is 7. What is that telling you? They all have something in common. The degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. So the number on the bottom is growing much faster than the number on the top. And I like to call that bottom heavy. Okay, The bottom is growing so much faster than the top that it's causing this fraction to have a very big denominator, which is why it is heading towards 0. Now let's look at number 2 and focus on the degree. The degree for 2a of the numerator is 1, x to the first, and the denominator has degree 1 as well. Part b, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 2 as well. Part c, the degree of the numerator is 4, and the degree of the denominator is 4. Huh, what do you notice? Same degree every time. When the numerator is growing at the same rate as the denominator because they have the same degree, then your horizontal asymptote is just the ratio of these numbers, the ratio of the leading coefficients, 3 over 5, 1 over 2, 9 over 6. And then lastly, the other possibility is that the degree of the numerator is greater. So notice in 3a, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 1. In b, the degree of the numerator is 3, and the degree of the denominator is 1. And in C, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 1. So if the degree of the numerator is greater, then your numerator is growing much faster than your denominator, and that's causing your number to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not landing at a particular value, and that's why you have no x intercept, or excuse me, no horizontal asymptote. So we can summarize that in the following way. Let's say that our function is some general thing, ax to the m plus whatever over bx to the n plus whatever. We have three cases. If m is less than n, so the degree of the top is smaller, 
the degree of the bottom is bigger, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0 because it's bottom heavy and the bottom is growing so much faster than the top. If m, the degree of the numerator, equals n, the degree of the denominator, they're growing at the same rate and the horizontal asymptote will be the ratio of the leading coefficients, y equals a over b. And if the degree of the numerator, m, is greater than the degree of the denominator, n, then there will be no horizontal asymptote because it's top heavy and the numerator is growing so fast that it causes the values to just go on without landing at any particular level. So that is what we are hoping to go over today in this lesson. Um, last thing, looking back at the notes from last time, do the horizontal asymptotes fit with the patterns we have observed today? Well, let's just go right back through all of those previous notes. Let's see here. Number one, we didn't talk about a horizontal asymptote. Number two, we don't know the equation. Number three and four, we don't know the equation, but when we get to six, here we go. Notice that this is bottom heavy, the degree of the bottom is greater. And so that means it should have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, and it does. Number seven, also bottom heavy, the degree of the bottom is greater, and that means it should have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, and it does. Number eight, you have an x squared on the top, and if you were to multiply out the bottom, you would have an x squared. So they're the same degree. And if you were to multiply out the bottom, you'd have x squared minus 4x plus 4. So you have 1x squared on the top and 1x squared on the bottom. So the ratio is 1 over 1. And we got a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Number 9, we have the degree of the denominator is 2. The degree of the numerator is 1. So it's bottom heavy. The degree of the denominator is greater. And when that happens, you have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And number 10, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And when that happens, it's top heavy and you have no horizontal asymptote. So everything we did last time fits in with what we learned this time. Hooray! Okay, thank you. I hope that you have a wonderful day.